Hi, John. Hey, Suzanne. <clears throat> good to be here. Yeah, good to see you. So um, I want to thank you for uh, mentioning that book by David Kars. Uh -huh. um, it's interesting because uh, for a number of years now, I haven't been able to, I haven't had any desire to read a spiritual book or anything even on non-duality uh, that just kind of fell away at some point because it felt like just trying to gain more knowledge. But um, I read the introduction of that book and that just kind of pulled me in. And it's the first book I actually finished, I would say in three or four years. So there was something about it that was... Yeah, isn't it beautiful? It's really nice. I think it was almost, it's uh, kind of the the rawness of how he talks about things. There's no facade. No. And uh, yeah, so one of the things that, um, that he obviously uh, talks about and was kind of impactful for me was this idea that there's nothing that can be done to call it awaken. You know, actually I pulled up a sentence that I remember reading that, that it just kind of slammed the door shut for me on trying. <laughs> At least that's the way it appears right now. He, he said, this is what I mean by saying it comes naturally from the other side in quotes and cannot in any way be achieved by working it from this side. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And if you take that literally, which I do, it's like, holy shit, you know? There's nothing to be done. And while I had understand that conceptually at some level, previously at varying levels, probably the way that hit me was pretty significant. And um, it really brought into question a few things, that question, it made me recognize a few things. One is the seeker identity that, that I had Uh, is it necessary? <laughs> mm -hmm. And maybe even well, it's just not. It's it, it it's like a false anchor I had in life. Mm -hmm. Like I felt like it was important, and in actuality, there's a lot of things that came from that seeker identity. It's not just trying to learn about uh, self-realization. It was about how to be in the world and, and all of those things. And all that, that identity was like the thing for me through most of my life to kind of feel purpose, a sense of direction, whatever. And that's just like, not necessary, not needed, and in just really an idea in the, in the end. And, but the thing, the flip side of that is, okay, so, so now what? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I, you know, I don't feel anxious about that at all. I mean, it's just kind of just like, okay. If anything, I mean, if there are questions, it's about how how what it means to not feel like that's so important in the way I am in life. Like, what does that really translate to? And even, I mean, even that, as I say that, is kind of nonsensical. Like. Cause I don't need to figure that out. 
Um, but one, but one of the other things that's kind of happened is that the sense, like talking about the body or feelings or anything that can be attributed to a me doesn't make a lot of sense. Like it doesn't, like when I, like, you know, just, and by the way, this is not a criticism of anybody because God knows I spent a lot of years kind of in the space of, of talking about those things and doing things related to them or thinking I was. Um, but it's like body? Like, why would we talk about feeling? And I, again, please don't take this as a criticism. I don't mean it that way. Yeah, but yeah. like, why are the heck are we talking about feelings and bodies? And like, that, that has nothing to do with it. Yeah, yeah. There's and, nothing happening. <laughs> there's nothing happening. And, and, and the, this idea that something has to be managed related to that mm. feels so it, it's beginning to not not entirely you know but it's beginning to feel so irrelevant totally yeah yeah this is the thing the the so-called more that falls away the less there is to say. How can you say anything at all? Yeah. And the only reason I think I'm able to speak more concretely about things is because I speak to people every day, but most of the time, nothing makes sense or it's really hard to, not only do I not believe what's coming out of this mouth, <laughs> I know it's helpful in certain situations because that's how it was here at the time. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, the more that falls away, it's like, wow, there's just nothing to say. It's almost like you're looking at, you're, you, it, for me, it's almost like paying attention to something that's a distraction over here, mm. you know, off to the side, like bo the body or, or a sense of feelings in the body. I mean, they're there in some way, but it's more of a like a, I don't know, just off to the side a little bit. It's like, eh, that, no, that's too much. <laughs> that's giving it too much credence. It's, it's just what's here now. Mm. You know, it's just like, what's here now? By the way, that is another realization that it's like, I used to listen to people talk about the simplicity of this. They, people would, say it's so simple there's nothing to it and it, uh, you know other words like that now, maybe you have even said that and i and, and it never really quite made sense because the effort for me was nothing i would never call it easy or simple but recently it's been more like There's no, there's no effort. There's no need to to to, ha to to for it to be here, regardless of what it is. Mm. That's the quote unquote simplicity for me. Mm. Like there's no there's no need to do anything or feel or be or it's just what's here. Yeah. And that's where you might, for me, where I might apply the word simple. In simple, I don't know, is that the right word? Maybe just like, I don't know, just is. Mm. This is back to simplicity for sure. Okay. Yeah, it it's almost like, what I had been thinking about when people spoke about simplicity was completely like 
trying to put it in the context of of objective life. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like a concept or something. It has nothing to do with that. No, not at all. It's the absence of that that makes it simple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I thought I had a question, but I don't even know what it is. <laughs> No, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's amazing when it's just so clear that all of it becomes irrelevant. Yeah. There is no problem anywhere at all. No. Yeah. I mean, it's even becoming much clearer that quote unquote problems, challenges are just more of it. No. I mean, they have characteristics. But at the deepest level, the, the what they are is no different than anything else that it is. Yeah. And when when it just becomes obvious, it's like, what was all that about? That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Like, kind of going back to the simplicity thing, it's like, wow, that just was a lot of mind shit going on. Mm. You know, it just, I don't know. Yeah. But it is amazing, like, when the body is more contracted um it can't help but believe to yeah. some degree what's going on yeah and there where it's just it all just melts away and it's just there's no edge yeah. anymore you cannot grab onto that anymore it's just not even possible yeah yeah nor is there a desire. I mean, it's, it, it, it becomes obvious that it's ludicrous to even think like that. Like, just nonsensical. Yeah. Anyway, I guess I just wanted to report out where things were with me. Because I don't know what the question is. Yeah, but that's wonderful. Thank you. I'm really glad you enjoyed the book. It's um... Yeah. It really is something special about him and the yeah, way. I agree. There's such a, a genuine, uh, yeah, words are hard, but you know, he's just himself. That's it. He's himself and he's brutally honest and doesn't give a crap about how it's going to come across or. Exactly. And. Yeah. You know what? I'm sorry. I don't want to take too much time here, but you know, one of the other things that occurred to me is like how much, uh, how much, uh, spiritual teachers, quote unquote, spiritual teachers, um, try to make a story out of this. Mm -hmm. Not all of them. Yeah. You know, he talks about that a little bit, but like, yeah. And then it might be misleading, but then again, who knows? Maybe it's very helpful for somebody. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Anyway, yeah. thank you for these sessions and thank you for, to everybody else for attending. Mm, yeah. Thanks so much for sharing, John. All right. Bye. Bye. Hi, Jean. Hi, Suzanne. How are you? Good. Nice. How are you? Um, I, I hear John uh, say a word, attention. Uh, that's actually uh, related to my first question. Mm -hmm. um, do you still have the attention or the focus point? Because I hear some teacher, um, they, they say like, uh, when, when we have this attention for normal people, that's where the me hold. Mm. 
Um, so just like every other type of functioning in the body, attention just comes and goes. It's a functioning of the brain, I guess. So mm-hmm. just like the eyes see and hearing happens, mm-hmm. it's just that the me will take ownership of it automatically. So it's not the attention that's, there is no problem, but when there's ownership, it feels like I can direct my attention and I am directing my attention, just like I'm directing um, what I say. Mm-hmm. Um, it will feel like that, but um, I think to a certain extent, bringing your attention back to the present as a practice is good if the mind is just chaotic, the attention is going everywhere. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it could be helpful for certain bodies, for some certain people. But at a certain point, it's not needed because uh, the, the brain and attention, it just comes and goes on its own. There's no control in it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but it also doesn't mean if you've had a really busy day and your mind is going like this and to just rest the attention here, if that's relaxing, go for it. it. There's nothing right or wrong with that stuff. Um, is, is that does that clear up? Uh, so so for attention, when, for example, when you have attention, would that limit the scope of the perception? Then, oh, if you have attention, in, in your situation, I mean, if for normal people like me, yeah, that's gonna limit, right? Because we're talking about boundaries, everything, but then suddenly, if you have the attention, then it will be limited to to certain angle or oh. area. No, uh, the attention here can go to a certain task. It mm-hmm. it just naturally does that. There's no um noticing of it. It just happens. So it's not like you are. Everywhere, every, um, uh, every corner, or oh, aware of everything, you are not like that. Well, there is only everything, so it's obvious that there isn't a position here. Mm-hmm. It's just everything, and then the perception and functioning seems to happen from this body. So there's a general perspective from this body, but. There's no longer a, um, a very solid, separate like entity from everything. It, it really feels like life is just living. So anything that this body does, it's just life doing it. Just like it's happening there. But it have to be at that, I mean, have to be what's rela- relevant with your character right it's not like uh, spreading out the globally everything it still have to be something relevant uh this character is pretty um similar yeah the conditioning of this body is just free to be as it is mm-hmm. um is that what you mean like it's different from another body Oh, um, because I'm always confused, like, what's everything, right? Because everything I saw is like, uh, you, you're going to have a super ability, you know, access all the information, you know, oh. everywhere. It's not like that. Oh, it's no. Whatever relevant to you. It's, it's more like all the knowledge that you gained over life, that it's completely seen to be just fluff, just made up. So when all of the knowing and knowledge that's been accumulated in that lifetime, it just goes to nothing. It's not like it can't be used, but so then everything, when everything, when all of that knowing disappears, then all there is is everything. 
because when there's knowing that I am, that's the first kind of knowing. Um, then there's a very solid position from which everything is then coming out from and being in relation to. And it seems much more real. What I think and believe feels much more real. Um, so when that solid knowing of I am dissolves, then the brain still so-called knows stuff, but it's, it's like, um, it's not solid reality anymore. It's kind of seen like this is just learned. This is something learned. Does that make sense? <laughs> like language, you know, like uh, Korean, like I speak Korean, but like Korean isn't the truth. English isn't the truth. No word says the truth of any kind. It's just a means of communicating. Mm -hmm. Some people are, you know, know different languages and all of that, but really none of them have any solid reality to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, and you mentioned about this I am knowing, so that's also a function of the brain. So that still happened, but just for nobody, right? No, the I am dissolves. Um, but the knowing, for example, I know there's a meeting today. The knowing today's meeting, knowing who Suzanne is, that's still, that knowing is still there. It's still happening. But there's no people, no, no person take ownership of that. Is that a correct statement? Oh, uh, um... Yeah, I don't know if I would call it a um a knowing. This body just responds to Suzanne. I don't know if that's a knowing. That's like a energetic response that just happens from conditioning <laughs> or something like that. Um oh well, yeah, it could be just wording, right? Maybe the knowing can be just specifically uh, used for this non-dual message. Mm. Yeah, but knowing that the meeting is like at this time and stuff. Yeah, that's a it's a relative knowing. Um, just like speaking, hearing, that kind of knowing still happening, but for no one. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, yeah, I still don't know if I would call it annoying. It just happens. Mm -hmm. It's it's not seen as anything um, identifiable anymore. Like, it really loses its substance. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I can't really differentiate or distinguish much anymore. It just all seems like, I don't really know what's happening, but then this body just speaks and does because it's programmed and conditioned to, but it's not really thought about that much. Mm -hmm. That's a good answer too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jane.